Hello friends, welcome back to our video lecture series on course title fluid mechanics 2. In this lecture, we will continue with our previous topic centrifugal pumps and we will be discussing minimum starting speed of the centrifugal pump. As we have discussed in the last few lectures, that uh, working of the centrifugal pump, how it works, different types of the centrifugal pump, its uh, different component and also uh, different rates against which my pump is working. Again, uh, different efficiencies and we have also solved some numericals by deriving the expression of uh, work done by the impeller on the fluid. And now, uh, whatever we have discussed previously, that mechanical energy will be supplied to the impeller through the shaft, and due to that, uh, it will start to rotate. And whatever liquid is in contact with that uh, impeller will also start to rotate. And due to that rotation, there will be a development of centrifugal aid due to that water or whatever fluid will be pushed away from the central axis of the rotation. And this is what the principle of forced vortex flow. Uh, now, uh, that liquid will be taken to the outer part of the casing where kinetic energy has been converted into the pressure energy and it will be taken with the increasing pressure energy with the maximum value at the outlet of the casing to the delivery pipe and it will be delivered to the desired location. Uh, now, uh, whatever this flow which is being takes place through the centrifugal pump will be takes place only if whatever the centrifugal head due to the pressure rise which has been uh, developed inside the pump is more or more than or equal to the manometric head. Now, if we talk about the manometric head, we have already discussed what is manometric head. Manometric head is the total head or it is the head against which my pump is working. Now, if we are considering this is an example where I need to take water from this uh, source of water to this overhead tank, then whatever the head uh, that is being developed in the suction pipe, that would be a suction head. Whatever the head which is being developed in the delivery pipe, that is the delivery head and this is the uh, total head against which my pump has to work, that is a delivery head plus suction head. This is the head difference or elevational difference uh, which uh, my pump has to develop to deliver water from this uh, location to this location and of course, when my liquid is uh, being taken from this water source to this overhead tank, of course, there are some uh, losses which are being uh, going to take place through those suction pipes and the delivery pipe. So, if I add those losses together to the uh, suction head and delivery head, then whatever the head we are getting, that would be our manometric head. So, it is the head against which my pump is working. So, in the simplest form, it can be given by the expression that is the suction head plus delivery head plus frictional losses in the suction head plus frictional losses in the delivery head plus excess head or velocity head available at the outlet or in the delivery pipe. So, this would be our uh, velocity head available in the delivery pipe. And if I add all those heads together, whatever head we are getting, that is called as manometric head. Now, uh, in case of centrifugal pump, my flow will only commence if and if my pressure rise in the impeller or whatever the centrifugal head which is being developed in the impeller that is more than or equal to the manometric head. So, if my whatever the centrifugal head which is being developed inside the impeller is more than or equal to the manometric head, then and then only flow will take place. Otherwise, my impeller will rotate and rotate, but there will be no flow which is going to commence through this centrifugal pump. So, based on the forced vortex flow, the centrifugal uh, head which is going to be developed inside the impeller is given by the expression. Uh, you can refer this expression from any reference book. Uh, so, which is given by that omega square r2 square minus omega square r1 square divided by twice of g. So, you can replace this omega square r2 square with the uh, u2 square and omega square r1 square with the u1 square which is the tangential velocity at the inlet and at the outlet. So, uh, whatever the centrifugal head which is being developed in case of forced vortex flow, that is given by the expression u2 square uh, divided by 2g minus u1 square divided by 2g. This is our expression. Now, our flow is going to take place only if this a value of this centrifugal head which is being developed is greater than or equal to the manometric head. So, we are going to calculate what should be the minimum speed of the centrifugal pump under which my flow is going to commence or my flow is going to take place. So, for the minimum condition under which my flow will take place, for that minimum condition, we are going to consider the minimum. If you look at this expression, minimum value should be equal because this uh, whatever the head being developed that should be greater or equal. So, for the minimum condition, we are going to consider the uh, expression as 
u2 square divided by 2g minus u1 square divided by 2g is equal to hm so my minimum speed of the turbine should be in such a way that whatever the centrifugal head which is being developed inside the pump that should be equal to the manometric head of the by using this equation we are going to derive the minimum starting speed of the pump now let's talk about the exactly meaning of the minimum starting speed so it is that speed under which my flow will start to take place through the pump if your speed is less than that speed that is minimum starting speed of the centrifugal pump of course there would be no flow which is being take place through the centrifugal pump and your impeller is only rotating empty so let's derive the expression for the minimum starting speed now we know that this hm is the manometric head and if we look at the uh, manometric efficiency which is given by the expression ghm divided by vw2 multiplied by u2 so this is the expression of our manometric efficiency now if you uh, write down this expression in terms of manometric head which is given by manometric efficiency multiplied by v2 multiplied by u2 divided by g and just simply putting this uh, expression here the value of the manometric head in our this equation so what we are getting here u2 square minus u1 square divided by twice of g is equal to manometric efficiency multiplied by vw2 multiplied by u2 divided by g now uh, we know that this u1 is given by the expression pi d1 upon 60 and u2 is given by the expression pi d2 n upon 60 so after putting the values of u1 and u2 in the above expression places wherever u1 and u2 is there after putting those values what we are getting here pi d2 n divided by 60 whole square divided by twice of g minus pi d1 n divided by 60 whole square divided by twice of g is equal to manometric efficiency multiplied by vw2 multiplied by pi d2 n divided by 60 whole divided by g now if you see here we can take here pi square n square pi square n square and 60 square as a common so if we take this pi square n square divided by 60 square as a common so you can cancel this one pi and n from those expressions and the 60 as well so what we are left on the left hand side that is pi n divided by 60 whole uh, multiplied by d2 square minus d1 square whole divided by twice of g again this gg would also get cancelled so this 2 would be get multiplied with this 60 so what we are getting on the lhs pi n divided by 120 multiplied by d2 square minus d1 square is equal to manometric efficiency multiplied by vw2 multiplied by d2 now uh, as uh, this n is the speed of the centrifugal pump and this uh, n we have derived or we are getting this n in the expression which we have derived or uh, which is based on the our minimum speed condition that our centrifugal head which is being developed u2 square minus u1 square uh, divided by twice of g is equal to manometric head so this was uh, this is what the minimum condition we have considered that uh, pump should have an uh, uh, should develop this minimum head to uh, uh, commence the flow and of course so whatever this n n would be the minimum that is minimum speed of the turbine so if we write down this expression in the form of n that we are getting here 120 multiplied by manometric efficiency multiplied by vw2 multiplied by d2 divided by pi multiplied by d2 square minus d1 square so this is what the expression we are getting for the minimum starting speed of the centrifugal pump and by using this expression we can calculate what should be the minimum speed of the pump under which my flow is going to take place now if your speed is less than the speed whatever we are calculating by using this expression now if your n is less than value of n is less than n minimum then of course there would be no flow which is going to take place through the centrifugal pump so this is the expression for the minimum starting speed by using this expression we can easily calculate what should be the minimum speed of the centrifugal pump hope you understood this particular topic those are the references which i have used while preparing my presentation thank you for watching